Is that open exhaust now or no? I don't know what it's set to actually. That's it's on tour mode, so it may just be the bass sound. Okay. It's funny for a Corvette to have the noise behind you. It is. <laughs> it sounds familiar, but it's coming from a yeah, different spot. Yeah. You're not feeling well, that is the best governor I've ever seen. <laughs> it is torque managed, so you're not getting full output. Until right, it's right. broken in, we actually right. limit the torque okay. of the engine, try to break yeah. in, you know, you're obviously not behaving very well. You know, right, this right. is not what you're supposed to do on a brand new car. Right, right. So we want the gears to all bed in nicely, gotcha. and so we limit the torque intentionally. Right, right, okay. <laughs> it's still a safe level of performance. Okay. Now, obviously, this is a pre-production model, so it's got some, uh, the horsepower is somewhat limited, also because it, uh, it's not fully broken in yet, or even warmed up, right? Yeah, we've learned over the years, in fact, we see people buying Corvettes and they do a burnout right out of the dealership. Right, right. And that's not really good for the machinery. You really right. want to break it in easy. Differential, all the gears, they want to bed in and smooth polish each other. Right. So right. they have a nice, long, quiet life. And so for this car, it's the first time we've done it. For the first 500 miles, we dial back the torque a little bit. It's still a very powerful car, but we dial back the torque a little bit uh, so you don't damage it. People are really going to be surprised how quiet this car is because we've had to insulate the accessory drive noise right. behind you because that doesn't sound very good. Instead, we plumb the intake around the outside of the car, breeze through the, the quarter vent so you can hear some of that intake sound behind you and then, of course, the exhaust behind. I like this wheel. I like the fact it's not round. It's got plenty of knee room. And you've got about five inches behind you. Right, right. And you can go from full open like we have now. You put the side glass up and then you put right. the mid glass up too if you want to be outside open air but just tone it down a little bit. And the front end literally just drops off. It just drops I, I off mean, past you, your toes. You don't even see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Makes the car feel really small on track. Plus you're not sitting this way. No. You know? That's right. Some people because the front tires are so far rearward. Yeah and they consume so much space because right, they steer. The it's easy to put the pedal box, that's the easy solution, is you put yeah. the pedal box towards the inboard side of the car. We have a dead straight, column dead straight yeah, out here, the pedal great. straight. And nice dead pedal also. That's the great thing about the F1, is you, being in the middle, you can be nine feet tall, and your, <laughs> your feet go all the way to the front, and the A-arms and everything are yeah. over here. You know. Yeah. It was interesting when we first started taking the camo off, the cars didn't have badging on them. Right because there's no point labeling a Corvette if you're going to try to keep right, the right. fact that it's a Corvette secret. So we were all driving around these cars as they are, but no badges. And it was amazing the guesses we'd get on what yeah. people thought it was. Almost nobody thought it was a Corvette, except for the people who followed the mid-engine Corvette story. Right. So this one right now is not delivering full horsepower. No, it is not. It's a pre-production car, so obviously where it's, is it governed as well? It it's governed, uh, it would if it wasn't governed, because we right. have we have finished our calibrations on performance, um, and we've done that for the coupe, and it's shared with the convertible, so it will make full horsepower, but it's dialed back about 15, 20% okay. right now, just to preserve all the chassis componentry right. uh, during the break-in period. But this is about as close to production as you can get, correct? Yes. Right yeah. now, most everything comes off of production tools. This right. is an EX VIN, so an experimental VIN. Right. Uh, this car was built in Bowling Green, down the line. Uh, it's not fully set up yet because we're still building the seventh generation car there. Uh, but all the operators are getting trained. They're learning, learning to put the parts together in exactly what sequence. Uh, how much work can be done at each station, things like that. So this would be a pilot car, is that what they call you it? You can call it a pilot car. Yeah. yeah. Now, does this get crushed right afterwards? Is that, they used to do that in the old days. Uh, it will never go to sale. Uh, it may be crushed, not immediately. We'll use it for a variety of different right. things. Sometimes we use it as a basis for some future model. We'll do experiments on it. Uh, but eventually it'll be disposed of, even though it's 
perfectly. It, it breaks all of our hearts because all of us would love to see one of these in our garage, but right, we right. can't. And you're going to be building, as you said, uh, right hand drive for Japan and Australia. UK. And yep. UK. We've sold in Japan and UK because it's legal to sell left hand drive right. cars there. And actually, we're surprised the seventh generation was surprisingly popular in Japan. It, we sold a lot more than we expected to yeah. there. But there's Corvette clubs in Australia, and we've never sold the, the car there. They can import them when they're old, the older right, cars, right. or they can spend the whole price of the car, maybe two times the price of the car, to convert one uh, to right-hand drive and bring it in. Wow. Some people are paying 300 grand for a Z06 to bring it in there. Wow! And so I've met some of these people. They fly over and come to our Corvette events and then try to twist our arms into doing a right-hand drive. Yeah. Obviously, it's pretty expensive to tool everything up in a mirror version. So, uh, but this time we said, you know, this is gonna be a global car. We wanna sell it fully uh, representative of the American car in all markets. And that meant doing right-hand drive. Could you sell a right-hand drive Corvette here or is that illegal? That would be illegal, yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. But you can import one. You can import one under right. certain restrictions. Right, right. That's but we can't, we're not allowed to build them here. Right, right. But they will be built in Bowling Green, correct? All of them will be built in yeah. Bowling Green. And one of the advantages, actually, of a mid-engine architecture is it's slightly easier to do right-hand sure. drive because you don't have all the right, engine right, and brake right. hardware up there conflicting with each other. So it's less complicated to flip everything and over. And what percentage of production would that be? 5%? Of right-hand drive? Yeah. Probably very small. We don't know. Yeah. Since we've never sold in Australia, we've got a lot of passionate customers right. down there. We don't know how many people will actually step up and buy right, it. Right, right. We'll find out. You know, we're, Now, would it be sold under Holden, or is it still, what, what is it? It's going to be sold as a Chevrolet Corvette. We will use uh, Holden as a distribution network. Because I, I always assumed at some point Corvette would become its own brand. Just be Corvette, not Chevrolet Corvette. And in a way, it is. You know, it's kind of unique in itself. Yeah. It does. We don't put the big bow tie on the car and right, say right. Chevrolet. It's it's a brand unto itself, but it's definitely a proud member of the right, Chevrolet right. family. Yeah. Now you've been a Corvette for how many years? Now? Twenty-six plus. 26 years. Yeah. Started on the fifth year. So now it seems like with Mark Royce in there, you've got a real car guy as president. That's absolutely true, and we have more than Mark. Mary is also right, a but car I mean, person. But people performance-oriented versus selling unit-oriented. You know what I mean? I remember in the old days, <laughs> there'd be rows of cars sitting in parking lots just manufactured. Get, just get them out there, get them out yeah. there, get them out there, you know? Whereas now, it all seems to be focused on uh, performance and, and competing with the best in the world. Yeah, it's all about the quality for the segment. For our segment, it's performance-oriented. But I think uh, just doing quality cars is a mantra throughout the company. And it's funny to me to watch both the English and the Germans grudgingly give Corvette their due, which they never <laughs> really did. But you know, they always made fun of something in interior, or they'd find something that broke, or you know, whatever. Yeah. But now they're going, oh, okay. Maybe well, it's we okay. we know we're commanding respect. When whenever we introduce a new one, they ask to have one bar one, sometimes two of them. Right. And we don't often agree to that. We say, well, when they're for sale, you're welcome to buy right, one. Right, right. Oh, there you go. There you yeah. go. A little more character there. Yeah. And it's interesting because the exhaust is farther away from you. Yeah. The occupant compartment so much farther forward. The exhaust tips are 16, 17 inches farther yeah. away, which doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a lot between you and it also with the engine. All the the hardware and the body and with work. no drive shaft, you're almost gaining horsepower because the engine is going directly to the rear wheels. So you lose that horses. spin loss right, uh, right. of the prop shaft. But the most reason you gain horsepower is uh, intake and exhaust restriction. Yeah. Um, on the front engine car, there's not a good way to snorkel out to get to cool air. Yeah. It's, there's a real pinch point, and the exhaust gets pinched to get between your feet and down the tunnel. On this car, there's no pinch points. It flows right in through the quarters. It's like an old school, uh, very large oval uh, air filter. And then the exhaust routes, you know, it's got a high, right. like mini headers and right out the back under the trunk. So this is the only Corvette convertible in the state of California. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> You know, Corvette, it's, it's like the hometown team, you know. People root for the brand, and it's, ni it's nice to see. 
we have uh, a lot of passionate uh, customers and we also have a lot of passionate fans who maybe can't afford one but at least know about it some some people that's the only chevy they know is the corvette yeah but you know it's one of those cars it's aspirational you know if you're a blue collar guy you got a plumbing business and you're reasonably successful this is a real supercar you have a real shot of getting you yeah know? it's i mean it's attainable for anybody with a decent job you know when we do the lamborghinis and ferraris we'll get 700 800,000 hits when we did this short video the last time at the introduction it was five million <laughs> i mean it was it was like whoa now right now i'm about to use what i think is the coolest feature you know a lot of cars have a list system that brings the front end up and most do that you have to wait this pops right up but the coolest thing is it's gps tell us what that is exactly so every car has a GPS system. It knows where you are. Right. So uh, I just hit the button. We lifted the front because we're coming off a steep driveway here out onto right. the road. And uh, every time you do that, a uh, message comes up on the cluster asking if you want to remember this location. Right. And all you do is hit the button on the steering wheel and it remembers that GPS location. So every time you come to that location, it automatically lifts for you. So if you forget one time, you don't scrape the nose, it lifts. Right. And if you're coming in fast, it'll start lifting sooner and it lifts in two to three seconds and it's up. Wow, so if you live on a street or you have a driveway and you're, you know, just distracted, it'll automatically- It'll lift. automatically bring see, it up. That's gotta be the coolest feature. But that got, when we did the reveal in yeah. Tustin, yeah. I think that was one of the biggest applause lines was yeah. the front yeah. lift system. Because Corvettes and all sports cars are inherently low. And so to keep that performance orientation, that low center of gravity, the low nose in the front for aero, engineers have to struggle with that compromise. So enabling the front to go up almost two inches really gets people through a lot of the, the heartburn. But the biggest applause line is the $60,000. I mean, we that knew was, that was gonna be that, that was a shocker. A revelation. I mean, that was like, because you just expect things to be, uh, everything just goes up and up and up. And, no matter what field you're in, everything costs more. Hotel room, restaurants, gasoline, everything. Yeah. And to get a, a, a car with this level, everybody says to me, how do they do it for that price? Which you never hear in the car industry. Oh, that's way, <laughs> oh, that's way too much, that's crazy. You know, right. you, you just don't hear it. You and don't hear that. It's refreshing and it's kind of fun. But you're right, after the reveal, all the media rushed up to the stage and that's the question I heard over and over. Right. How, how, how would you do it for 60? And it was the same thing that people are saying, well, you won't really be able to get one for 60. Right, that was the you're other gonna, thing. You're gonna advertise that, and but you won't be able to buy one of those. Yeah, and from what I hear, I know a few people have ordered it and the dealer took the order at the dealer price. So it yeah. sounds like there's some pressure to not sort of gouge at the dealer level, I hope. Yeah, and the dealers are all independent businesses. They can right. do what they want, but right. we really have talked to them about not raising the price. Um, sell it for sticker, that's what we intended. That's what we did our business case right. around. Um, so we want people to get it for the price we say it costs. And of course, if you want to spend more, we have ways to spend more. There's lots of options yeah, that's that are good to know. And fun. <laughs> get to know a lot of the magazine guys and this might be one of those rumors that you hear but I've heard it too many times that when they do comparisons uh, some of the Italian exotic companies will say if there's going to be a Corvette we don't want to be compared to that because with the price differentiation even if it is faster it's not that much faster. Not as much faster yeah. to justify it. They justify the difference. So. But I tell you, there's almost every uh, high quality company in the world wants to be in this space. Every elite company, they have a flagship, a high performance sports car. Right. So a lot of their best engineers work on this stuff. And so there are a lot of very capable companies. All right, let's put the top up. Yeah, the nice thing about this car is if you're going under 30 miles an hour, yeah. you decide you want the top top down or top up. Oh, my hair. Okay, okay, I'll put the top up. <laughs> put it up. 16 seconds, and she's done. Wow, that's pretty amazing. You've got all kinds of room, all kinds of headroom, too. Yep. I think there's actually, for some big people, where they have the seat all the way back, I think it's actually a little bit more headroom yeah. on the convertible than on the coupe. 
And of course the window here. Yep, so that's still open. Yeah. You can choose to have that open or closed independently. Now when I lock the car and walk away, that'll go up and lock, correct? You have to manually, just like any car, you have to oh, okay. open, close the windows, close it up. Right, okay. It does have a feature that a lot of cars have. You want it, it will automatically lock and fold the mirrors and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's very comfortable. Yeah. Not cramped at all. And quiet and smooth. And so people are going to be surprised, I think, when they get in it. People have the idea of old Corvettes as being kind of harsh, hard to live with, and people have the idea of an exotic being kind of hot and hard to right. live with. This car is cooler, more comfortable than any Corvette we've ever done. You think that. you'll sell more convertibles versus hardtops because it's now essentially a hardtop. I, mean, I think so because you're not asking people to sacrifice anything. Right, right, you get all yeah. the looks and the security right, and the right, quiet right. and you don't lose any luggage room top up or top down. Right. Um, I think so. Um, I hope so. And if you look at the other people who offer attracting hardtop spider versions of their cars, they sell most of their cars actually that way. Right, right. Yeah. But to me when I take the top off the regular C8 it's almost as open as this. Almost. But you do have that standing structure behind you right, and that right. stuff that comes across the middle, right. that changes the airflow right, and it's right. noisier. Right, this is right. quieter. It right, just has right. the fairing behind your head. Right. Um, so it is quieter. It's more true and open air experience. But I do like seeing the engine compartment with the other one. That's the trade-off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the trade-off. And we did look to see if it was possible to do a folding top that would leave the engine exposed. It would have been a bad top and a bad little teeny window. Uh, probably would have had to have been a canvas top, which would have looked kind of right. cheap on uh, an otherwise very expensive looking car. But my all-time favorite thing is there's no Corvette SUV. That's your favorite thing, is there? Because I get that question all the time. Why don't you do a Corvette SUV? I, no, Porsche does it. Why don't you do it? I, no, I don't. Well, they have to do it. But Corvette has been successful, I think, because we've stuck to our knit. You know, we, we keep focused on what we do, and people say, oh, we've deviated from what we do. It's still two-passenger car, V8 powered. Right. It's the driving experience. As I said before, we're not experiencing the 100% of the power of the C8 Corvette because this is a pre-production model that is somewhat governed. I mean, it's still pulling really strong. But there's probably another 20 or 30 percent that's not in this one because it's you know it's got the the what do you call it, the experimental plate on it. Yeah, it, ex VIN. Yeah, it's an and experimental be, VIN on because it because it's given sometimes to be driven by auto show employees and yes. stuff like that. It's been transported around the country. Transported around the country. Yeah, they're not uh, doing burnouts with it, but no. it, it gives you a good idea of how powerful it. How yeah, powerful and how it quick is. the trans responds. It, it downshifts yeah, really quick. Yeah, and it quick. just shifts so quality, you know? That's what I hate about torque is that <laughs> you know, that weird kind of, whereas it's just literally just bang, bang, bang. It, 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 it feels like quality. Yeah, and even the city driving, just creeping around, the idle yeah. creep and stuff, it, in that, it feels like a fluid torque converter. It's very fluid off the line. No, it's a lot very of good. it's essentially a manual transmission with friction clutches. They're they're wet friction clutches, but it's very smooth off the line, and the gear shifts are real smooth at low speeds. And you know, constantly trying to bring down the demographic is very important. You know, because for a while there it was creeping up. Yeah, older guys getting the younger guys weren't interested in Corvette. Yeah. Now that you've got the science and the and, and the engineering, all of a sudden I see a lot of young people interested in this. Oh yeah, I think it's fantastic. We didn't we didn't do it expressly for that reason, but we're really, really lucky that both the physics reasons to do it and the demographic reasons to do it lined up. So in a way, I say we had no choice. We really didn't have a choice but to do this. Well, what a thrill this has been. I, As I said before, this is a pre-production model, so we're not getting the full impact of horsepower and a few other things, but it's 99 percent there it's 99 percent yeah. there uh, this is what the car will look like this is how it'll operate this is how it'll sound and this feel is how it'll sound and feel and boy all those things are just great you know it it it's such a leap forward suddenly the c7 just seems a little old-fashioned <laughs> I, I hate to say that because uh we're not going to get me to say anything bad about I like, the C7. I like my front engine Corvette, but this, you know, all I can say is it feels like the future. Ted, thank you very much, my Thank friend. you, Jay.
Always a thrill to have the uh, chief engineer come by. That's when you know they're dedicated. You know, when they send their top guy, it's not a <laughs> marketing guy. It's not the guy with the stripes and this. Yeah, yeah, it's just great. It's just great. So, well, you are the first person to drive. First person outside GM to drive a Corvette convertible, the new oh, cool. mid-end well, convertible. You, so I you. wanted to be here for sure. Well, it's an honor, uh, and I appreciate it. You and I have a history of doing these things in Corvettes. So well, let's it, do it again it, someday. Great. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> and uh, watch this space, folks, because there's going to be a lot more exciting stuff coming from Corvette. As an American, I must say, it does make me proud to know it's manufactured right here in the United States. And... Uh, just great. So, so once again, thank you, my friend. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.